What if I told you that everything you thought you knew about vampires and werewolves was only half the story? That the legends, the fangs, the transformations, the fear were more than just myths, but distorted echoes of real history and science? What if I told you that the truth is even darker than fiction? Tonight, we unravel the terrifying reality behind the supernatural, from rabid werewolves stalking medieval villages to horrifying diseases that turned ordinary people into something unrecognizable. We're digging into the facts that history tried to bury. And by the end, you might never look at the full moon or even your own reflection the same way again. Let's start with vampires. You've heard the stories, blood-drinking creatures that lurk in the shadows, their eyes glowing with hunger, their bodies immune to time. But what if I told you that the legend of vampires may have started in the graveyard? Back in the 1700s, terrified villagers dug up bodies of suspected vampires. And what did they find? Corpses that weren't decaying as expected, skin strangely intact, bloated bellies, and even groaning sounds coming from inside the coffins. But before you start sharpening wooden stakes, let me explain. This wasn't the work of the undead. It was science. A body left in the right conditions swells with gas. As pressure builds, it forces air through the throat, creating an eerie, unnatural moan. And that fresh appearance? It was just a trick of slow decomposition. But back then, they didn't know that. So they did the only thing they could think of. They drove stakes through the corpses to kill them, only to see the bodies bleed. More proof the undead were real, right? Nope, just post-mortem gases, forcing out whatever fluids remained. But that's just the beginning. Ever heard of porphyria? It's a disease that makes skin blister and burn in sunlight, just like a vampire. It even makes teeth appear more prominent due to receding gums. And in extreme cases, it can lead to an intense craving for iron found in blood. Now imagine someone suffering from this in the Middle Ages before modern medicine. People didn't understand. They saw the symptoms and the legend of the vampire grew. So tell me, if you were living in a time without science, would you believe in vampires? Comment below and let's see who would have been a hunter and who might have been accused of being one. And what about werewolves? Now, let's talk about the real monsters. Creatures of rage clawing at their own skin, howling in the night, attacking without reason. But were they cursed or just sick? Rabies, a disease that turns humans into real monsters. Infected people develop uncontrollable aggression. They foam at the mouth, they bite. And as the disease takes over, they develop a deathly fear of water, avoiding reflections and light. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Now, imagine medieval villagers witnessing this madness. They didn't know about viruses, but they knew what they saw. An ordinary person suddenly transforming into something inhuman, a beast. But that's not all. Hypertrichosis is a rare genetic disorder that covers a person's body in thick hair, even their face. Meet the wolf man of the 1800s, a man whose face and body were covered in fur, shunned by society, treated as a freak of nature. And in some cultures, people like him weren't just ostracized, they were hunted. They were the proof that werewolves were real. But here's where it gets really strange. ER visits and violent crimes spike during full moons. Coincidence? Or is there something ancient, something buried deep in our biology that still responds to the lunar cycle? Drop a comment. Do you think the full moon really changes people? 
Or is it just a myth we've convinced ourselves to believe? The strange science of superstitions. Garlic wards off vampires, silver kills werewolves, but why? Turns out, garlic isn't just a folk remedy, it's a natural antibiotic. Back in the days of the plague, families who ate more garlic often survived longer. So what if vampires, those pale, sickly figures, were actually just diseased people? What if those who avoided garlic were the ones most vulnerable to illness? The legend spread, garlic keeps the monsters away. And silver? Ancient shepherds poisoned wolves with silver. It was the ultimate weapon against predators. But what if they weren't just hunting wolves? What if they believed they were hunting something else? Modern science and the supernatural? Think vampires and werewolves are just old myths? Think again. Celebrities today pay $1,500 for vampire facials, smearing their own blood on their face in the name of youth. And DNA studies have found something even wilder. Some of us carry actual werewolf genes linked to aggression and night vision. So here's the real question. If you had the choice, would you take the vampire's immortality or the werewolf's power? Would you trade your humanity for something stronger? Something more? Drop your choice in the comments. Team Vampire or Team Werewolf? Let's settle this once and for all. And before you go, just remember, the scariest monsters aren't the ones in the dark. They're the ones hiding in plain sight. Sweet dreams. Watch the shadows.